Mysteries. I am your host, Patrick Moran. Thank you for tuning in, whether it's the audio side, the video side. And by the way, if it's the video side, enjoy while you can because we've been having some uh, gear issues. So I, I don't know how long this stream is going to last. But anyway, again, Imperial Pizza here in South Buffalo, Abbott Road. I am joined by Houston, Texas defensive end, Buffalo born and raised Bishop time in high school. University of Buffalo College, mm -hmm. my man, Super yes. Bowl champion, by the way. I can't call you. Come on, I can't address you without saying Super on, Bowl man. champion. Damone Harris, man. What's going right. on, buddy? How you doing? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. It's a pleasure to be on here with you, man. It's pleasure. fun, man. We just, uh, I'm kind of a bad influence on Damone. He's a professional <laughs> athlete who eats very well. I yeah, kind of was. I try. You know, I had to get him to, right. to have a couple of these wings here. They're really oh, good, man. Oh, these wings man. here at Imperial. Like, ah, man. They, they are really, really good. Pretty cool, by the way. We're sitting there eating, and uh, I mean, a couple of kids come up to you, ask you for autographs and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. What's that like, man? Do you get? Is it some? Are you getting used to that now, man? Is it? Is um, this, it never gets old, does right. it? Right. Um, it never gets old. Um, I think one thing I took from one coach told me in college. He said, um, "One day the music's gonna stop." And yeah. I didn't really realize what that meant until, you know, me like I'm going into my sixth year professionally in the league and, and, and whatnot and you know one day the music is going to stop meaning like you know cool things like that aren't always going to be there so i always am uh, willing and able to always willing and able to um you know help out the fans and, and anybody that wants anything signed by me because you know i was once that kid myself yeah for sure and it's really cool and by the way if you're watching this on the video side uh mm -hmm. Grown into quite the young man here. I'm going to pull this back up if you're watching on wow. the video. That's the wow. Moan Harris Bishop time in wow. high school. Was that 2013? 13. Class wow, of 2013. Wow, man. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Now, again, I've known you for quite a while now. Yes. Um, you know, your best friend is my nephew. And, yes. You know, we, we go way back. We, mm -hmm. It's funny. When you were a kid, mm -hmm. and I want you to talk about this a little bit, mm -hmm. you actually didn't really... I mean, you played football. You didn't play organized football. You played no. football, though. Yeah. Yeah, unorganized football. But yeah. you wanted to be, and, and I learned this about you a while ago, you want to actually be a rep. You want to be a WWE I superstar. I want to be a WWE bona fide superstar. John Cena. I wanted <laughs> to be all those guys. But that was my first love. I wanted to be in the WWE. And then it shifted to me wanting to be a basketball player. Yeah. And then um, found out there's no 6'4 centers in college. So. <laughs> I had to switch gears to football a little bit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Who were a couple of your favorite wrestlers like when you were oh, growing man. up? Oh man, she got The Rock, John Cena, Stone Cold Steve Austin, yeah, that you were there, man. Edge, all those guys. Back when wrestling was wrestling, you know. You when know. you when you were a kid and you would dream of, of being a wrestler, did mm -hmm. you um, did you envision yourself as, as a baby face? Did you envision yourself as a as an evil heel? Man, what, I, what I, you was, want I was like. I want to be like that evil villain, kind of like the Undertaker. Like <laughs> he just like appears out of nowhere, yeah. And like someone's about to get choke slammed, but you never know where he's coming from, kind of play. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to be that guy. Yeah. You know, one of, one of the funniest things, and again, I, I've known Damone for a while, and obviously you're a full grown man now, an NFL yeah. player. But to mm -hmm. me, you're kind of you've always been like a child at heart. You're still yeah. you're you're a oh, big kid. You're a big yeah. kid at heart. I mean yeah. that obviously in the most right. complimentary way. Right. Um, right. And we're gonna kind of like weave in and out of your growing up in, in your career but i kind of mm -hmm. want to fast forward just for this point that i'm making about you still being a a big kid at heart right so you um after school and you were with the tampa bay buccaneers yep, and after, i was living college, yep. and we were living in florida my, mm -hmm. my wife my son and i were living up uh, maybe 45 minutes from you yeah, yeah. so that was cool for yeah. us you know i was yeah. excited about that right. and i remember um in fact, I still think you were living in the hotel room. I don't even think that mm -hmm. you had your apartment yet. Nope. And one day, Shane uh, at Brady River High School, they were playing flag football. They like they had a flag football tournament yeah, yeah. at the South Florida campus in yeah. Tampa, mm -hmm. and we and we scooped you up and you came. Yeah. And this is just flag football, 14, 15 year old kids. These were like JV right. kids at the yeah. time. Yeah. And you were running around. Yeah. Like crazy, yeah, like yeah, somebody yeah, would yeah, make yeah. an interception or yeah, something. Yeah, and you're yeah, running yeah. around with a towel. Nah, was, yeah, I gotta get hyped for the kids, man. That's why I get hyped. <laughs> I get hyped for the kids. The next generation. It's always about the next up and coming. And I mean. Florida high school football is completely different down yeah. there. It's a lot more intense, you know. So um, it was good to see the athletes um, down there in Florida work and, and seeing your son Shane work as well because he's a, obviously like a little brother to me too. So. Yeah, well, 
that, that, that all that was cool but it was for right. me it was fun watching you just right, run around right, right, and, right, 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 yeah. and get excited like you're not out there playing right you know? yeah, yeah. these are kids kid. and they're not even like there's not yeah. even like oh my god look at this hit. right right Boom, yeah, yeah. Was flag football right and right. the mo's still going nuts yeah of there. course yeah just <laughs> having fun that's what the game's about at the end of the day it's a game and you just want to continue to have as much fun as possible with it you know you uh You've gotten quite interview or comfortable, I should say. I'm um, doing interviews, right? You know, like, through the years. Yeah. Talk about that. Like that's a process for you. Like, right. You know, I I talked to my son, and again, it's just a different level. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. talking. He's playing high school football. Played mm -hmm. high school football. You're at the highest level now, but you played high school football. You played right. college football. Right. And he told me, let me know if you agree with this. Mm -hmm. He said that he wouldn't get nervous. Like he could play football in front of two thousand people, mm -hmm. and that was second nature. Mm -hmm. But, but uh. A microphone, you know, if the school reporters ask you right, questions, right. or if you even go like in the you know to right. dances like, uh, and uh, stuff uh, like that, uh, that anxiety uh, kind yeah, of gets yeah, in yeah, a little yeah. bit. Was it a like out of a law process for you getting comfortable being on a microphone, you know, having the camera in front of you and, and having uh, people approach you? Like I said, you're right. sitting there having dinner, a couple of kids come up to you, right, ask you for autographs, stuff like that. Like talk uh, about that process. Right. Like I think that. it's I think it's more just like um you get better with it over time. I mm -hmm. think my first interviews, I was I was that kind of in that kind of mode, like jittery. But then, like now, as you know, you do things just like it's just like I'm just having a conversation with yeah, you. Yeah, like we don't. I don't see the headphones or the mic, or I don't see the camera. I don't right. see the light. I just you don't see this big annoying yeah, yeah. Here at Imperial Pizza. <laughs> Shush, <dude. laughs> yeah, it's just like having a conversation. I think obviously just being mindful when you do interviews and and trying to you know whichever questions you you receive, just trying to be a step ahead of it in your head and um, trying to anticipate what maybe is going to come next. Well, not with you, obviously. Right. But we're like like family but you know with different kind of media outlets just knowing what might come next and how you're going to go to answer it and keeping your composure with all that kind that's of a key thing too yeah. sometimes keeping your composure right. sometimes you know you're like i want to say something right right but you right. gotta be careful you know like, right exactly. how you say it right and stuff like that let's right. go back to let's go back to, to high school actually mm -hmm. now again you grew up not playing organized football which yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are some, but there's not many players who play and make it to the right. NFL who don't right. start playing little. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Now, you didn't even play any high school football until like yeah. the end of your sophomore year. You kind yeah. of dibbled around yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I came out my sophomore year, and they wanted me to play JV. And I think I played one game, and I was on kickoff return, and it was cold <laughs> as you know what outside. Yeah. And I got hit by somebody. And I was like, all right, I'm done playing football. <laughs> <laughs> and that was I was the last time I played football my sophomore year. And then I came out my junior year because we had got a new head coach um, for football, and that was uh, Charlie Comerford. Mm -hmm. And he was like, look, he was like, look, if you come out, you play football, I can turn you into a Division One football player. And I'm like, what? Like, I ain't never getting a three-point stance before. I didn't never – like he wanted me to play DN and tight end. I'm like, I never got a three point stance. I don't even know the rules of the game. I kid you not. Yeah. Like, I'm used to playing. Like I grew up in like a church. So I'm used to playing like catch in the backyard with like my siblings and like all the church kids and stuff. We would just like, we didn't even know what I didn't know what a route was. All right. Now we make routes on the ball. All right. You run here. Right. You run here. You. What's a route tree? Exactly. Like, I don't even know that. So um, that's kind of just was my beginning upbringing in football. And then. Didn't really didn't play really until the end of my junior year. Played like the last two games of my junior year because when I first came out, I was terrible. Like I was, I was terrible. I was like, look like a baby giraffe, uncoordinated. I had never trained for anything. Right, like yeah. I, I'm in the in my house doing push-ups and curls. That's what I think. Like in calf raises, I, that's what I think make you jump high. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I know nothing about nothing at this point. So I do that. Come out my last two games of my junior year. I think that's when Chad Kelly was still at Joe's. Yeah, I played against him. I remember that. Um, yeah, the last two games of my junior year, and then came out my senior year. I probably played like six or seven total games because I had gotten hurt, had a high ankle sprain yeah. this half, I this remember half that. my senior year. And then, so I'm talking, you're talking in total, probably high school. I probably played like 10 games, maybe that. Maybe yeah. That, so. Now, I, I followed your career mm -hmm. from high school for obviously because Jordan right. Williams, my nephew, you know, right. I was going there right. to watch him play. Mm -hmm. By the way, shout out Jordan Williams. Shout out Jordan going Williams. to the Bishop Simon Hall of Fame J this year. So Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's awesome, yes, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> he gets mad at me because yeah. I still haven't had him on the show yeah. yet. <laughs> he still to this day gets mad at me. Uh, but anyway, I, I remember obviously I was paying attention to him, but I, I remember at that time seeing progress mm -hmm. from you because you right. and Demo or um you and Jordan were close and Gibbs, right, right, you know, you right. guys were really close. Right. And I and I saw the progress and I remember right. When you sprained your ankle, right at the time, 
it's just funny. And I'm sure you can say this now too, looking back in hindsight, most of the time when a player ends up in the NFL, right. you kind of know at a young age, like mm-hmm. this kid has something special. Right, right. Now, again, maybe if I knew you better or knew right. your work ethic, I didn't right. know that at the time. Right. But just as somebody in the stands, right. you know, seeing you as a junior and then even seeing you in high school, because right. like nothing stood out at that yeah. time. I'm no, like, I yeah, couldn't like have I said, at I was, this kid and said, oh my God, this guy's going to be in the NFL. Exactly. Well, I mean, like you, I think that was my first time playing, organize anything. I didn't organize sports in general. So it yeah. was like... I, I'm I'm still figuring out like the law of the land and you know adapting to a new environment and being in South Buffalo and you know things of that nature and you know I I didn't know much of what I was doing honestly and I didn't I just knew in my head what I was willing to put into it mm-hmm. like coming from where I came from and my work ethic like what I knew like I knew I was willing to put the work in I just needed the right guidance I needed the right people in my life that showed me like the right way and fortunately I had that and. Um, and some of the coaches I had in high school and, you know, fortunate to be like guys like Joe Mahalik, who he yeah, got drafted into the MLB. And, you know, so he's just, you know, just being around those guys and seeing like, you know, no, you need to do this and that and showing me how to train and things like, like it really uh, helped me um, transition to college. Now, know? before we talk about college, mm-hmm. you know, I mentioned you going to the Bishop time in high school. Of right. course, that's right here in South Shout Buffalo. Out mm-hmm. Now the thing is you would say, all right, well, Damone lives really close to Timon. Well, right. Damone did not live very close to Bishop Timon. He did not. Tell, tell people who are listening or watching this yeah. right now what you had to do to get, to, get right. to school every day, right. man. So um, I grew up in the East Ferry Projects on the east side of Buffalo, mm-hmm. right up the street from uh, ECMC. It's still there. Um, and I would take, from, my, my, from the projects, I would take the 12 to the either the 19 or 23. Then I would take the 23 to the 14 and the 14 and timing. So I would take like two wow. to three buses every day just to get to school in the morning on time. And like, you know, so that was a, that was a battle in itself. Um, getting to school every day. And then, you know, obviously going to class. And then after that, going to practice, like, you know, all by myself and then catching the bus back home. Cause like my mom still to this day does not have her driver's license. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still to this day does not have her driver's license. So she didn't drive. And like my father wasn't present, so um, yeah, still to this day, doesn't have her driver's license. So, everywhere I needed to go, I had to catch the bus or hitch a ride with Jordan or <laughs> yeah. something like that, you know. Now, before we, like I said, before we get to UB, and I know mm-hmm. that a couple coaches, especially Coach Comerford, were kind right. of instrumental in helping you right. get an opportunity at least to potentially go to UB, right? Right, talk about. The sacrifice, mm-hmm. you know, is is not free to go to to Catholic high school. Oh, you know what I mean. Not. So absolutely talk about not. like the sacrifice that your mom made to help right. get you there. Yeah. Because I mean that that, yeah. that takes a lot. You yeah, know? my mom is my mom is superwoman, Wonder Woman, always would be superwoman to me because mm-hmm. um you're talking about um we, we grew up in the projects, it's it's four four kids she raised by herself, you know, we're on all kinds of government's assistance, and she would literally take her tax return. And I mean, would take from my other brothers, like it would, it, but they all believed in me, yeah, you know, and take our, her tax with her money, and that was that's how she paid my tuition, um, because I had transferred in the time in my sophomore year, so from Buffalo Academy of Science Charter School downtown, yeah. bu- downtown Buffalo, so she would take her tax return every year, and that's how she would pay for my tuition. And I had made a promise to her, like, look, if you pay for me to go to high school in time, and you won't have to pay for me to go to college, because I was determined to. Now, earn a scholarship somewhere doing you know what i mean like athletically or you know so when um, did you yeah. when did you first get an inkling mm-hmm. in your own mind that i could play college football and it, it would ultimately it right. would be about opportunity but right like when did you when did you first look at yourself in the mirror and say all right forget what my stats are right now right, time right. and like what, right what's inside of me that tells me that i could play football right. at a high division one level right so i mean i like I said, like it, it took people just believing in me, like mm-hmm. like Charlie coming for you, just like like him saying that to me, and like me having no prior like football experience, and him just being like, "Look, if you come out and you work hard," and that was all I needed was someone to be like, "Come out, work hard. I'm gonna show you the way. Mm-hmm. You just got to put the work in, and you can become this, you know, Division One football player." And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep my head down. I'm gonna grind. I'm gonna, you know, do what I need to do in the classroom. And you know, let the let the rest handle itself. And you know, even if it didn't happen, I could, you know, be satisfied with the fact that you know I gave it my all. You know, sure. So, yeah. When you um, 
All right, so you, so you're at Tymon mm -hmm. and you go to UB. When you, when you first start playing football at Tymon, mm -hmm. you're on the bottom of the totem pole. You're at the bottom mm -hmm. of the ladder. You know, mm -hmm. you, you said it yourself. You never played organized football. Right. You didn't even understand route tree concepts, and right. defensive schemes, and right. concepts Not like at all. that. So you're learning the game. Now you're getting mm -hmm. to college again. And when you go to UB, you're a preferred right. walk on. Not a walk on, right. you're a preferred walk on. There right. is a difference. Shout out to Greg Meyer. Shout out to Greg Meyer. So the way the way I got to um, UB was actually so Charlie Comerford, his brother in law, Greg Meyer. He was a graduate assistant at UB at the time. He was kind of my connection to how I got to UB. So um, he, Charlie had shot him my film. And um, he was like, look, this kid's gangly or whatever. He, you know I mean? He, you know, he, he's he, raw. He's raw. He's very raw. But, you know, he has a shot to be, like, eventually play. So they didn't come to my football games. Like, I started getting recruited late, like, December. Mm -hmm. And I, they, they came to my basketball games, actually. So, like. It was Coach Don Patterson back in the day. He's old, retired by now. But, like, Coach Don Patterson and Greg Meyer, they would come to my basketball games and just see, like, how athletic I was. And that's how they recruited me, and I got that preferred walk-on spot. So You uh, you had more fun playing high school basketball oh, than course. football, didn't oh, you? Man. I know Jordan did, too. Oh, you man. Guys yeah. about it. Bishop Tymo was a fun – you guys were a fun team to watch back right. in the day. Um, right. That was a lot of fun. You know, when you look back now, wherever you – are in life now wherever mm -hmm. you're going to be in life mm -hmm. do you still kind of look back at those high school days it's kind of almost like oh, man. the yeah. good old days you know what i mean oh. and no matter how old you get and yeah. where you go in yeah. life and you could be you know 10 20 years down the road you still mm -hmm. feel like you're going to find yourself going back and, oh, and picturing some of the shenanigans that oh, you and course. you guys were pulling and stuff oh, like of that of course because it's like the, the higher you get in the level of football or whatever whatever sure. sports the more professional it becomes the more business oriented becomes and it's like there's a sense of when you were in high school, like the innocence of being a kid and just like you're playing with your friends and like, all right, all right, we, we, we go to practice and then all right, it's all right, Friday, Saturday night, all right, we're gonna go hang out at Cass Park and you know, da 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 and hang out and you know, it, it was just it was like it was just fun. It was just not to say it's not fun now, you still enjoy it, but sure. Obviously there's just more business involved in being a professional football player as to being a high school football player. So you get to UB yeah. and you are again quite literally on the bottom of, course, of the ladder yeah. all over again. What's yeah. it for, what's it like first stepping out of college campus? Oh man, um, so I can't, I got to UB through the EOP program. So uh, Coach Meyer, Greg Meyer got me in through the EOP program um, at UB. So I was not allowed. They had like a summer program that was like they they condensed a semester into like three or four weeks. So oh, they wow. like made it very difficult. Like over the yeah. So I had to take these classes that didn't even count towards credits, no credits. <laughs> like that semester. Right. But yeah. I had to take these classes that basically it was to weed out kids that weren't necessarily fit for college. Sure. I made it through that, but I wasn't allowed to be do any of the football stuff. So I wasn't allowed to go train with, the, with my team. So my first day walking in the building as a walk on was training camp. And I had this coach. <laughs> I won't even mention his name because <laughs> whatever. Well, he was a position coach. At See time. what we were talking about 20 yeah, minutes ago. He, he was a position coach at the time. what you say. He was, yeah, exactly. He was a position coach at the time, and I'm I'm last on the depth chart. And Khalil Mack is obviously an All-American. Sure. So I walk my first day on campus. I'm barely – I got 10 games of high school barely under my belt. I walk in, I see Khalil Mack, Brandon Oliver, yeah. those kind of guys. You hear about Stephen Means. Yeah. Um, And, you know – my first day of job, this coach tells me, you'll never play it down here at the University of Buffalo. And I'm like, man, I got my work cut off for me, you know? And, and and ever since then, man, I just kept my head down and used any any fuel, anything anyone said to me is, is motivation and drive. Because like I said, I was very raw, but I knew what I was willing to do and put into becoming better, you know, at the game of football. So I just, you know, Khalil didn't even have to say much to me. It was more I learned from those guys, him and Brandon Oliver, just by just watching their work ethic, watching what they do, you know. You've since then have played mm -hmm. with and against some of the best players on this earth. Right. But going back to when you first walk on the UB, mm -hmm. from an athletic talent standpoint, were you right. almost like kind of in awe of somebody like Khalil oh Mack and just how good he was? Oh, man, that dude against, um, like I said, my first day was training camp. So we get through training camp and then, you play Ohio State the opening week. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that dude goes absolutely crazy. I think he had two and a half, three sacks. Yeah, he put himself six, on the map big time. Nine solo tackles, so that pushed him into getting drafted in the first round. You know, all that like best player in our school's history, and I was you know very very fortunate to to see him on a daily basis and the work ethic and all that. That's what I was 
you know, very fortunate of myself to be able to just to see it because it was like, all right, well, if this is the standard, then, you know, if I could just grasp a little bit of this and, you know, work, then maybe I could become eventually one day, you know, somebody that can, you know, be a guy in, in college football and, you know, eventually have the bigger goal is have aspirations to make it to the league. What, uh, how big were you when, when you first got to UB and how big were you when, when you left to get prepared for the NFL? Right. Um, I think when I first got there, I was about six, four, I was like maybe two thirty, two thirty five, something like that. I think when I, by the time I left, I was like two seventy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there was there was there was a lot of weightlifting, a lot of <laughs> I, you know, quick funny story. Yeah. So, um, I was in Florida already. You were at UB, right? And I had been gone for a couple of years, and you wouldn't even know this because we only saw each other pretty much in passing, right? But it was during the summer. Mm -hmm. You were still at UB, so this was before you were done with school, right? And I was, we were at the Bishop Time and Beer Tent. Okay. And and again, I hadn't seen you in a couple of years. <laughs> and you were a big boy in high school right, going right, into college. Right, right, I mean, right. Almost a big boy. Right. I saw you. I don't remember who I was with, but I remember seeing you. I was like, God damn, holy shit, man. <laughs> Freaking yeah. blew up, man. You yeah, did. Yeah, you went yeah, on a good yeah, yeah. 25, 30 pounds of muscle. Hey, I was like, I almost didn't even recognize you at first. I was like, holy shit, man. Yeah, that college dining hall. <laughs> <laughs> now, man, dining talk, hall. Talk, talk about, you know, again, going from the bottom working your way up becoming right. a scholarship player becoming right. a starter becoming an all conference right. player right like was there a certain point where you can remember where that confidence has really kind of kicked in for you you know what i'm saying like you know physically you're gonna right. be able to handle it it's like right. mentally like i could do this at this level again right i just think every year at ub i just kept climbing and, and trying to get better you know like my freshman year i was a uh a red shirted walk on afterthought got like crapped on by everybody like you'll never play here you're this, right. that. you're this and that you can't even do this or that and i just kept working and i worked throughout that whole winter after the season and i came on spring ball and had a really really good spring ball mm -hmm. and unfortunately earned a scholarship coach quinn put me on scholarship for some reason they thought i was leaving or transferring i don't know what gave him that impression but i just went with it because he was like you weren't leaving or transferring yeah yeah, yeah. i wasn't leaving or transferring <laughs> but for some reason he thought i was leaving he's like all right we're gonna put this kid on scholarship so i was like you know that was a, that was a big moment for me, and and uh, you know when I got on scholarship, called my mom. We you know we shed tears and just happy like it was just like I fulfilled that first promise I made to her, and um, earning that scholarship. And then from that point on, it was just went. My redshirt freshman year, I played a little bit. Redshirt sophomore year, finally earned a starting position. You know played played well. Junior year started to earn accolades. Senior year became all conference. You know I was up for the Brosworth Trophy, like for the, the walk on award. Um, so. It, it's just that he climbed, you know. And I, I, I don't know if I could say there was one defining moment. Maybe when I became a starter my sophomore year, I think maybe the first game we're playing Albany. And I got this TFL against Albany. It was like my first play, like big play making as a starter. And I was like, okay. Like, yeah. Like this, this, this is heading in the right direction. The work that you're putting in is paying off. And it was like, they just let me know that like, all right, your hard work is paying off. And just, just kind of kept ascending from there, man. All right, we're going to take a real quick break. Come back with more Damone Harris here live at Imperial Pizza. Be right back. All right, we're back here. Imperial Pizza, 1035 Everett Road, South Buffalo. Damone and I just polished off some really, really good wings. Man. Man. You know what? By the way, this place, Damone, has maybe the best lunch special of anywhere in town. If you come in yeah. between 11 and 4, you could get like five wings and a beef on whack and a pint of beer or a pop for 12 bucks. Really? That's just cheap in this economy. Wow. <laughs> That's Buffalo for you. That is, man. Shout this out to Imperial Pizza. <laughs> Best pizza in Western New York. Yeah. Hands it's down. Right. I used is. to come here after high school just for a little slice. Get my little fix in. We were you know. talk. We were talking before we started taping this, mm -hmm. and I I feel like there's two places that are more synonymous with South Buffalo than anywhere else, oh, man, and that's you know it. pizza, yep. food. You come to Imperial, mm -hmm. and also now they got a really nice bar. You can come have some yeah. pizza beer too. Yeah. Or if you want to go get your drink on, go to Doc yeah, Sullivan's. Go to Doc like, Sullivan's. Doc Sullivan's Imperial Pizza. Go to Doc's. <laughs> those are uh, those are uh, the Doc's. two spots here in South Buffalo. Great mm -hmm. stuff. All right, so. You're done with UB, mm -hmm. and it's getting to be near NFL draft time. Mm -hmm. You don't know at the time. Mm -hmm. it, it could go either way if you're going to get drafted. Now, I've talked to 
some football players who right. were taken in the sixth or seventh round. Right. I want to know your opinion on this. Mm -hmm. Are you kind of glad once they got to be in the seventh round, mm -hmm. some players say they'd rather not be drafted. Because, oh, of course. Because then they can control, you right, know, if they're going to give, you know, multiple practice squad offers or, uh -huh. or undrafted uh, free agent offers, I should right, say, sorry, right, right. where they could go. Once it got to be to a certain point where you like, right. I almost don't want to get drafted. Right. I mean, you oh, oh. As, a, as a player, I feel like as a competitor, you always have that edge sure. that you want to get drafted because, you know, you see some guys that got drafted in front of you and you maybe have better stats than them or whatever. Even now, I look back at that my draft class and those guys that got drafted and most of them that got drafted in front of me aren't even in the league anymore and I'm going in my sixth year. So it's like, yeah. obviously, you should have drafted me, but, you know, right. um, selfishly. But, you know, you get, that, you get that edge. And then from there, I mean, yeah, I would say it's better. If I don't, I'm not going to get drafted in the top three, four rounds. I'd rather go undrafted because you go to a – you can pick a team. That's a good you know, fit. You had about four or five offers coming out of the draft. I can, you can pick a team. That's and, what I was going to ask you. you know? So after the draft is over, right. obviously you go to Tampa, and right. I would certainly think that you don't regret any of this because no. it ultimately led you to be in a Super Bowl gym exactly. you know, at the end of exactly. the day. At that time – so you right. signed with Tampa. Were mm -hmm. there other teams that were interested? Oh, yeah. Were like, there, what were some of the other teams that at that time? Um, that if I remember, I, I think the Giants were, the Titans were. Um, a couple of teams were looking at me at like a, as like a 3-4 outside linebacker. Um, I know. I remember Seattle. I had a, a private workout with the Seahawks I remember and, that, and the yeah. 49ers. I think some, some those were two of the teams, but. Um, you never know. I mean, during that process, they they sell you every dream and lie. Oh, we're gonna take you. We're gonna draft you. We're gonna this. Or we're gonna that. And you never know until you, you see your name to come come across that ticker. And if it doesn't, you know, you know, you get to pick. And, I mean, I was fortunate enough to have options, and you know, Tampa, Florida wasn't wasn't a bad option. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's where I'm going next. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. listen, man. Yeah. Um, you're an NFL player. I talk about the NFL. That's pretty much all we have in common when it comes to that. But right. one thing we do definitely have in common for sure mm -hmm. is we've spent our whole life living in Buffalo in this right. region and in this right. area, area until right. I was in Tampa like mm -hmm. maybe a year and a half before you ended up signing with them. But for right. both of us, we were in Florida, right. and we had never been anywhere like that before. Right. Talk about – yeah, the culture shock of yeah. going from you know a really gritty, cold weather, quite right. likely four seasons, Buffalo, right. New York, to one to season, Tampa, which is a beautiful city. Amazing, I mean, come amazing. On. amazing Talk city. about that culture shock. Yeah. It was just, uh, it was just completely different. I, I mean, you're talking at seventy something degrees in December, and you're like, <laughs> it's crazy, dude. Right? I'm not used to this. I'm not, <laughs> but I love it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, I kind of wanted the snow because it's like, you know, like man, like you just miss it, you know. But it. You know, you get the the rain in Tampa, the monsoons and hurricane season, and but I mean, you just it was just a complete culture shock because it's not what you used to. I mean, we used to the grit, the grind, the blue collarness of Buffalo, New York, and I love it. That's why you know I'm, I'm here right now. I love Buffalo, but um, being in Tampa, it felt like you're on vacation all the time. Yeah, but, but I had to get my mind. Yeah, to like, no, you're here to work. Yeah. You're here to grind. You're here to, you know. It took me. I, I was there for five years, and it mm -hmm. probably took me a good year and a half to kind of get out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel I'm on like vacation I'm on vacation all the time. Yeah. And it's look. There's a lot of beautiful things about it. Man. There's some things you don't know until you get there. Like one thing I didn't know. It rains every goddamn day. For yeah, like, like hard for like like six months, like an hour every day. <laughs> yeah, and then from it's, like four to five, it rains so hard, <laughs> and then the sun comes out, and then it's like it never happened. You're like, <laughs> it's crazy, you know? man. Now selfishly i was glad to see you go to tampa again because right. i was living there and uh, right. we got a chance like you you went to a couple of shane's high school football games we yeah. lived about an hour or so apart you right, came up to right. a couple of his games mm -hmm. uh, one year you and jordan and the family we all had thanksgiving dinner together right, so again yeah, selfishly nice. for me it was cool and i gotta tell you and, and this is not mm -hmm. a diss to the tampa Bay sports base, right. their fan base right i'm not trying it can to be a little fickle the fans <laughs> A little fickle. <laughs> Here's an example, folks, yeah. of what I'm telling you about when it comes because people, I'm always bashing Tampa sports fans, not just football, <laughs> all of them on Twitter, and I get a lot yeah. of shit for it. But yeah, here's a perfect reason of why this happens. Okay, now we're from Buffalo. Yeah. Again, you grew up here, and obviously, you know, you're not a Buffalo Bill, so you're you're right. using Texan, but right. you know what it's like in Buffalo. Game oh, day, the city lives, breathes. Man. 
sleeps. Whether Buffalo they're winning Bills and football. losing, it's a draw. Whether Josh is throwing eight picks or he's throwing eight right. touchdowns, they're going right. to right. win the Bills. It's so important mm-hmm. here. Now, we were in Tampa when you were playing, and I and I won't forget this because you mm-hmm. guys were playing the New Orleans Saints. Yep. And uh, you got us tickets for the game. Mm-hmm. So myself, my wife, Shane, we, we go to we, we went to your house. Right. And uh, we were hanging, we were there early, so you and Shane were messing around playing video games for a while. But anyway, so go to the stadium, and I could not believe it. First of all, again, it was like October, November, and it's seventy some degrees right. out, which is that it, it's weird in itself. You see but nothing but Saints fans. It was not even. There were a lot of Saints fans, right. but not even that. But so it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against yeah. the New Orleans Saints. You know what right. I'm seeing? I'm seeing a lot of Green Bay Packer jerseys, a lot right. of Vikings jerseys, yeah. a lot of Jets jerseys. Right. It's like still it, right. it's a transplant area. Right. Well, yeah. See, you you got those border states like Florida, California. Yeah. Those those sports teams that are not like Northeast teams. There's a there's a yeah. Look at the ge- geographically speaking, there's a melting pot of people to begin with. So it's like mm-hmm. people from all over, and that's why I feel like the fan base isn't as strong as say like the Cleveland Browns or the Baltimore Ravens or right. the Buffalo Bills sure. or a Northeast team because they, they live and die by their sports teams up here. Yeah, yeah, it was, it would just be, it would be weird. I think Jameis yeah. was the quarterback yeah, at the James time. Was, but anyway, yeah. I mean, he do a touchdown pass. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the Saints won that game. But saying, <laughs> but he do a touchdown pass and like the crowd was, it was like, yay. Yeah, no, yeah, it was like, yeah, like, like, crazy. Nobody's you going feel nuts. Like the, oh my yeah, God, I did not feel, it. feel like the, the Buffalo. It, it yeah. was really weird. Then, of course, a couple years later, Tom Brady shows up there, and all yeah. of a sudden, oh, they're a diehard oh, fan. Yeah. We've always been like this. Yeah, We've yeah. always been fans of the Buccaneers. Exactly. What do you mean? There's a handful of them that really are, but for the most yeah, part, no, yeah. again, but most all in all, I mean, yeah. obviously, you were grateful that your first oh, man, NFL course. opportunity. It was an amazing experience. Talk about your time a little bit with Tampa. Like, who were a couple of, like, the guys that you got to know while you were in Tampa that became, like, not just – you know, your peers on the field, but maybe right. friends in the locker room, stuff like oh, that. Oh, man, like um, Vita Vea, we came in as rookies together. He's still down there at Tampa, yep, obviously. Yep, yep. Um, but, you know, we still talk here and there uh, to this day. It's my guy. Um, Vita, like my whole rookie class, you just never forget your rookie class. You right. Know? Like Jack Sitchie, he's coaching out Wisconsin. Um, a bunch of just of, of my rookie guys, man. Just and even vets like Will Ghoston, um, Jason Pierre-Paul, Bo Allen. Play with all those kind of guys on the D line, and you know, even like you know, seeing guys around the locker room like Jameis, um, you know, Peyton Barber, so many uh friends that you know, I know I'll, I'll be have those friendships for a long time outside of football, you know. Now, you get there, and again, I know you, you are a very driven person, mm-hmm. you know, somebody might have an inch in height on you or a couple mm-hmm. pounds of weight, or they might be, mm-hmm. you know, a split second faster than right. 40, but nobody's going to outwork you. And I've known oh, that course. about you for a long amount of time. So mm-hmm. I know that your mindset coming in the training camp as a rookie in Tampa is like, I'm not going to be outworked. I know oh, that. For but sure. Did it come to a point where you click, where it clicked for you were like, I got a legit chance to to make this organization. Now you mm-hmm. did, and you made it as, in, on the practice squad right. coming out as an undrafted rookie. Which right. Is, God damn impressive. What, right. And what part of camp was it early on in camp where you were like, all right, man, you know, this is my guy. Yeah. This is this guy. This is the uh-huh. guy. I can play with these guys. Right. And I mean, I think when you first go to get to the NFL, it's like, like it's like a shot. Like, oh my goodness, that's Mike Evans over there. Or that's, you know, so and so or so and so. That's JPP. And mm-hmm. those guys step that have been in the league for, for so many years. They, they move with so much confidence to where sure. it's like, it could be intimidating for yeah. undrafted rookie. It could be intimidating. Like, but it's the way that the longer I've time I spent in the league, it's just like you have to be like that. And a lot of people, like media outlets and fans, criticize guys for being so confident. But you, in a sense, you have to be like that because it's such a, like a, like a dominant sport. Like it's just so like you gotta be on your game at all times. But yeah, in training camp, I mean, after that, like shot kind of settled away, and you know, I kind of like got on the field a little bit and, and was competing against the other rookies and like rookie mm-hmm. mini camp and. You know, gaining confidence little by little, and they start making plays in training camp, and then you get the preseason games, and you make some plays, and you're like, all right, like you know, like like I said, like that moment I had at UB where against, you know, U Albany, and I made that tackle for loss. It's just like, no, I can, I can do this. I can, you know, and it's just, it's just keep stepping in that and 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 trusting your process and and running your race. I feel like, so it was like, all right, all right, this guy making maybe can do this, but you know I'm good at this, and you know I'm I'm not gonna prove in that and that in the off season, but you know right now I know what I can do, and I'm gonna be confident in what I can do. You, you know? eventually spent time on the active roster and played right. some games, which I 
thought was awesome. You know, right, I was yeah, really was, excited yeah, about that. Year, yeah, oh you were God. on, so I have TweetDeck, by the way, and mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever used TweetDeck, but it's kind of like, you know, Twitter, you got to refresh. Right. TweetDeck is just, it always comes down. And I would oh, have okay, Keyword okay, okay. Damone yeah, 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 it yeah. on the right side, just so oh, if any nice. news would come yeah, down, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be uh, among the first to know about it. Oh, so, cool. you know, you're in Tampa for a while, and then I, it was, what was it, 2019. I remember this too. So you guys went to London. Yeah. <laughs> played like shit. Yeah. You got yeah. I mean, Jameis threw the, Car- fir- the first play of the game. Pick six, right? Yeah. Mike was, Mike Carolina, was running, right? a, running a slant. Pick six. To yeah. the so we you like. guys played terrible. Got smacked. Yep. And then that week after, you got released. I'm like, you didn't, mm-hmm. you didn't even play that game. I was an actor. <laughs> Like, I what made the What are they trying roster. to make I was changes inactive. for the sake of changes? Literally, I kid you not. That situation, I don't think I've ever never told you about this. Like in that situation, I didn't even speak to Bruce Arians at all. Like the head coach, I didn't. I was just released with not like no explanation wow. as to why I got released. I was actually in Buffalo because it was our bye week the following week. Yeah, and yep. I flew home. Um, I think that Monday or that Sunday, maybe like Sunday night Monday. And I was just home, and then like Shelton Quarles, who was a director of football operations down in Tampa, had just called me. He was like, um, "We're releasing you. Can you come down to the facility and bring your iPad?" I'm like, "I'm not even in Florida right now." <laughs> so they give me a flight, fly me to Tampa just to turn in my iPad, the playbook. And you know, I'm like, "Well, all right." <laughs> how did you handle? What What were your initial thoughts? Like, how did you handle that initially? Right. Because to this point, right, that was high the first school, time. college. Yeah, yeah. That's the first time where you've ever been like right, cut. I'm yeah, feeling a sure. rejection. Cut, I mean, it's a, it's a it's a feeling that you know, as a professional, um, you know, the first time obviously is like, yeah, like man, like was there anything? But then, like I said, like the, the the higher level you go in professional sports, you just start to see how how it's a business more and more. It wasn't even that I did anything wrong; it's them just having to make space on the roster because they felt like as a team they weren't performing up to expectations. So. They cut me, and unfortunately, I got to shorten the stick. But it was like, was there anything else I could have did about it? When I look back and reflect on the situation, I was like, I did everything I possibly could, right, to be a part of this football team. I made the roster. I was inactive the first few games, so I was like, what, what could I have done? Like, you know, they did that, and then, you know, just after you get that feeling, and then you know, another blessing comes along. I get the call from Baltimore, right, and um, Baltimore signs me to their practice squad. Um, you know, I'm there for a short time. Four weeks, about four weeks, about four weeks, there. four weeks, and I'm seeing Lamar Jackson. I'm seeing, you know, this guy work and seeing those guys. I'm like, man, it's a whole different. Culture. What are you from the from you from what little time you got to spend in right. the organization with right. them? Right. What do you think about Lamar? I, I love that guy. Man. Love he's good. He seems like a really good dude. Really good dude, man. He's all about his teammates. Um, he's all about winning. He's all about being a competitor. Can't say a bad thing about the guy, man. And, you know, I mean, I wish him all the best. Hopefully, that he gets paid soon. <laughs> you know, so he's gonna get paid. He's, he's, somebody somebody gonna do somebody's it. Gonna somebody gonna do it. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna pay that man. Yeah. You know? Um. All right. So you're in Baltimore for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. What were you doing? Do you remember when you got that call? I'm assuming it's from your agent, right, right, telling right. you about Kansas City. Because right. now, if a team and that's like poaching at that point, like right, if you're on a practice right. squad, another coach. team signs you, they're putting mm-hmm. you. You know, you're going to the active roster. Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting in a in a coordinator meeting, like with our D coordinator, like going over the defensive game plan for the week. And mm-hmm. this would have been, I think my fifth week in Baltimore. And he's like, look, Kansas city just called Emmanuel Agba, Torres Peck. He's out for the season. They need a DN and you know, they want to sign him. I'm like, let's do it. Like, <laughs> and at the time Baltimore is like red hot. Yeah. And I called my people and they're like, why would you leave Baltimore? Baltimore, like, they're going to win a Super Bowl that year. Blah, blah, blah. Like they were red hot. I'm telling you. And it was like, it is crazy because when I got to Baltimore, from when I got to Baltimore to literally the rest of the season, I didn't lose a game. Like from either team being a part of. From Baltimore, then went to Kansas City, I didn't lose a game the rest of the season. Wow. So it was like, it went from like a, a terrible feeling of getting cut by, um, you know, Tampa Bay and me not being able to control that essentially to go on to Baltimore and then getting a call after four weeks of being there to get poached to Kansas City and then being able to get some time and play there and finally getting some experience again like a real shot to play in the league, you know. So. This I this I remember really well. Right. So you're with Baltimore, right? Kansas City calls you, you're mm-hmm. signed with the Chiefs. You literally your first game mm-hmm. is against on the road. Mm-hmm. Against the New England Patriots, yep, yep. and you're lined Prime up. Time. 
and you're playing against Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. The and I remember mm-hmm. talking to you a couple days maybe after that game. You might have been on the mm-hmm. podcast that following week. Mm-hmm. And I remember asking you, I said, God damn, you know, you're you're on the practice squad in one yeah. week, and now the next week you're, you're playing, playing under Brady. the lights, and you're playing against the greatest quarterback in NFL history. Well, yep. at least he's the greatest quarterback right now. Yep. We don't see about that down the road. He did Because of your, your teammate. My but, boy. <laughs> but anyway, on a serious note, I'm like, I'm asking you about this, and you're almost like, and I remember this, you're almost kind of like nonchalant about it. Like, yeah. you know, just another guy is another guy. Right, right. I'm like, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you are playing against Tom Brady. Right. Again, you're going from, right. from being on a practice squad. Right. You're getting cut to be on another practice squad. Right. So now you're on the field contributing and yeah, playing play a lot of snaps Brady, yeah. against Tom Brady. I, like, yeah, well, I remember, now that yeah. you've had a couple of years in hindsight, yeah. what was that feeling like that Man, first game? It was, it was, it was a blessing to say the least, like being a, where I was, what I was going through at the time. And like, you got to think that was my third team that season. So I'm yeah. like, and like you said, I was like nonchalant about it, but like in my head, I'm like, I, I kind of have to be this way because sure. I don't have time to like stop right now and smell the roses. Like I have to like be locked in. Yeah. Get ready to play against the Patriots. And I remember my first play, Tom Brady looks me dead in the face and like their offensive coordinator. I'm pretty sure like they knew I'm, they know who I like the Patriots. They know everything about everybody they're playing against. They, Sure. No, the game plan. So they're like, obviously, no, it's like my first game. And they're, they're, their first, I mean, like my first time I was in a the game, they ran a sweep my way. I never forget. It was like they had double teamed with the tight end and the tackle. It was like Isaiah Wynn, and I forget the, what the tight end's name was. And I made a tackle for loss against uh, Rex Burkhead and looked Tom Brady dead in the face. Like, ah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that was, a, that was that moment, another moment for me and being like, like you can do this sure you know what i mean like you could this is the best this is the this is the highest level this is prime time you're at gillette stadium it's 15 degrees outside and i'm playing for kansas the kansas city chiefs and i just made a tackle for laws tom brady and you're talking shit i'm talking i'm talking trash to tom brady that is incredible you know know? as a as a player again (laughs) and i completely agree with you and i understand that you gotta stay focused on right you know what's ahead you can't get yeah. too into it but right. as a person who knew you at back in high school right. my first thought is man i remember seeing this kid play against kenichi's high school against right. jack kelly against kid, like he was you know a baby giraffe with new legs practice and now you're literally yeah. you know talking jabbing right. with tom brady yeah. it's just it's incredible to me and to yeah. your point kansas city did not lose a, a game that year you guys yeah. beat um I, I got my notes here who did you got houston smacked houston in the Smack divisional houston. round well then smack them they had us down. Yeah, that's right. Early oh, four to yeah, zero. Yeah, that's Remember right. That? In the first half. Yeah, yeah they were smacking the, first the quarter. shit out of you. They, they had us down 24 Yeah, nothing. that's right. And then right. we came back and, and lit a fire. <laughs> lit was a fire it nerve wracking? You know what? Now that you say that, I remember that. Yeah. Like, was it nerve wracking oh, for you being goodness. on that sideline? Oh, you're, my God. Like you're in the playoffs. We're yeah. supposed to win, and now we're getting smacked. We're getting smacked. Like we're supposed to be like, and we're getting smacked. And we're, we're all just sitting on the bench. And like, but you, but this is like when I realized how great like Pat is, like 15 was. I'm like, you just see the composure, yeah, and you see like the killer instinct, and I'm like, and this is four years ago, yeah. I'm like, oh, we got a chance, and we like, oh, we got a chance, and then he just unleashed everything on on them. Sammy Walker starts going crazy, Tyreek goes crazy, Travis goes crazy, and we just worked our way back. And I think we ended up beating them by like twenty something. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The score wasn't even. You <laughs> it did. was like fifty something, twenty two, thirty one, or something yeah, crazy we like that. Them by like so yeah, if you look at the box score, it looks like right. a beating. But that's right. Yeah. You guys were. We were down twenty four, we like big. nothing in the first yeah. quarter. And then you beat Tennessee in the AFC Championship yep. game to go to the Super Bowl. Yep. And now, yep. next thing you know, you know you're in Tampa, mm-hmm. Tampa a weeks earlier. Now you're going to Miami, but right. to play in a in a Super Bowl. Man. What was that like arriving in Miami and? I know. Again, your focus. You got. You're winning the game. Right, that's your primary right, focus. But right. yeah, I'm sure at some point you're kind of soaking this in a little oh, bit. Man. Like you're in yeah, Miami. It, you're with the Kansas City Chiefs. You're playing. Man. By the way, you're playing too. You're right, an active exactly, officer, exactly. and you're playing. Right. What What's your mindset at that time? I, I it's, man. It's just. It's just a lot. It was just a lot to take in at the time, and it was like, like you said, I was just trying to stay focused on the task at hand. But at the same time, it's like. You got people from all over hitting you up and, and text messages and phone calls and social media and no, just just congratulating you. And I'm like, man, it's just it's all just a blessing. It just put everything in my career up until that point into perspective and being like, like really just made me realize hard work pays off. Like, yeah, all this stuff people were just saying, they weren't just saying it like it, it really pays off. I'm in this position that I never thought I would possibly be in. You talking about a kid from the East Ferry Projects at Buffalo 
that comes from literally nothing mm -hmm. to, to not even playing football at all to, to, to not even being a scholarship right, athlete coming scholarship, out of high school to, to having the potential of playing in the Super Bowl like and then to go on and win the daggone thing win the thing <laughs> finish finish the job and again right. you are playing in the Super Bowl yeah. you're on the active roster yeah. if you're watching this by the way on the video side I got to pull this up because these are some of the coolest pictures man ever. This is the moment if you're watching on the video side uh -huh. in the aftermath of the Super Bowl. He's Look swimming and making snow angels and Look all the confetti. That. Look at that, man. <laughs> so you look back at the It doesn't even look, even I look at the picture now, it doesn't even look real. Like it looks like it was Photoshopped, but like it, it was like that moment right there. Yeah. Like, like you can't see in the picture, but literally there's like tears streaming down my face. I can't even like believe it. Like it's just. It's want, crazy, man. It's the culmination of everything. Yeah, that, just, that, that, just that's soaking it all. Exciting in. relief. Yeah. Just like, we're that was in. that was because in that game too, I think we were down ten points. I think like six minutes left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah. And that was, we were in that jet chip wasp play that passed through to Tyreek, a long bomb. It was it was a good game. Yeah. And, and again, I remember, you know, there's only been a couple times where I've watched football. Minus being a Bills fan or something happened to Bills, where I kind of got emotional. Right, right. That right, was right. one of them. And my wife was here, by the way, right, here right, right. Pizza. She was uh yeah, she was crying. Yeah. My man Jordan Williams is in the house here too at right. Pizza now, your boy. Right. Um, but yeah, man, you get that feeling of euphoria, and then right. you guys come back the next year, yeah. the Chiefs, and, and you're in the Super Bowl again. Yeah. This time yeah. the outcome's different. Talk, right. Talk about that difference. Yeah. If it's even possible to articulate between right. walking off the Super Bowl, you know, walking off the field as Super Bowl champion, right, and then not having your way at all, the offensive line for Kansas City was really Man. cleaned up bad. And you got Tampa think. completely exposed. Yeah, that. yeah that's your exactly. old team too, by the way. Freaking Mario Addison, Mario mm -hmm. Addison took out Eric Fisher in the AFC Championship yeah. game, <laughs> popped his Achilles, so we didn't have a left tackle. So Pat's running for his life in the Super Bowl, and we had already had some injuries early in the season, like Kalechi Asmeli, who's an All Pro guard. He's he's an All Pro with with, uh, with the Jets. Um, we had um who else did we have at right tackle we had mitchell swartz who he had ended up getting hurt hurt his back so we had all we had an all pro line it's just all the guys were just getting hurt yeah and then by the time we made it to the super bowl like still for us to make it that, it was just like and pat still played unbelievable yeah we had a couple of guys drop some passes in the super bowl like touchdowns that hit him right in the chest it was just it just wasn't our day but um you know it, Nonetheless, it was still a blessing to be able to make it to the Super Bowl back to back years, you know, win one, lost one. Like, like I mean, us Buffalo fans know how hard it is to make a Super Bowl. I mean, and to win it, like, we made it to four straight in the 90s before I was even born. And right. We weren't able to come up with a win. So, even to make it there, people don't realize it's extremely difficult because it's harder the second time to make it back because now you got the target on your back. Yeah. Everybody knows you're good. They're going to get your back. Exactly. So you, your best shot. You're going to get your best shot. They're going to give you your best shot every week. So, yeah. um, to make it there was a blessing. I mean, unfortunately, I'm not a two-time Super Bowl champion. Only one, one time, but <laughs> only one. Sorry, that's more than what a lot of people can say. <laughs> you know, you we know? talk about Pat Mahomes all the time, and you would know yeah. this better than most. We know what an unearthly talent he is. Yeah. One Dude's of the best quarterbacks ever, man. Mm -hmm. And he just proves it year and after year after year. Mm -hmm. Is he also? And again, you being in the locker room and getting to know him, some right? Is he a lead, is he like a leader? Is he a good man. leader on oh, that man. team too? Uh, of course, you you just rally behind a guy like that. It's like when when when, it, when Pat talks, it's like he, he doesn't say too much, but it's like it's like one of those people that's like, you know, even if he doesn't say much, when you when he does talk, you listen because it's yeah. like you know that's that's a goat talking. Like that's that's not just he just wants to win. Hey, you just you just he could and you know how great he is or how much of a competitor he is that he just you know and everyone. I mean, obviously they're Buffalo rivals and everyone from Buffalo. Is like, oh, I hate that home. He sounds like coming the frog. This, that, and the third. And but I kid you not, man. I can't say a bad thing about the guy. The guy works his tail off. I think he he was back even after he won the Super Bowl. He was back in the gym like twelve days later. Yeah. <laughs> like every, even after a sprained ankle. Like dude, I just played with a sprained ankle in the Super Bowl, won the thing, and then not less than two weeks later, he's back in the gym working. So it's like. You can do nothing but respect a guy like that. You know? I, I love Pat Mahomes. Exactly. I'm a like, fan, and I can't help but be a fan exactly of him. I mean, like, that doesn't mean I don't love Josh mm -hmm. Allen. Josh Allen's my guy, but mm -hmm. yeah, man, I'm a. I just have a ridiculous amount of respect for Pat Mahomes. Right. Were you able to avoid his, his little brother and his TikToks? Oh man, <laughs> I hate that. Oh man, no, Jack, hey man, he, he was cool. Jackson's cool. Brittany's cool. I can I don't want to say nothing bad about them. We love them. They family. We locked in for life, man. I do you know me. what? I knew you were going <laughs> to Nothing but love for those people, man. <laughs> I'm right. going to leave it at that. You can leave it at that. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> so, all right. So, 2021, um, your time with Kansas City comes to an end. November right. you, uh, of 2021, yeah. you joined Houston. Yes. Was that a an easy decision for you to go to Houston after Kansas City? Were right. there other teams that, like, you could have right. considered going to? Um, yes, there was other teams. There was, like, eight other teams that could have went to. Um, and I just – I chose Houston – because at this point in my career, I think it was year four, it was it was less about – I'm not saying I, I don't – I want to win. Believe me, absolutely. I want to be an, uh, absolute, be on top of that mountaintop again and win the Super Bowl. You know, fortunately, I was able to do that, being a part of um, Kansas City and winning Super Bowl 54 and going to back-to-back Super Bowls, which is more than what a lot of players that ever played this game could say. Absolutely. But, um, you know, at that, at that point in my career, it was more like, all right, I want to – you know, potentially put myself in a position to be a dude, you know, in this league. And I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm still obviously working towards that now going into year six and, you know, learning from veteran guys and, and things of that nature. But, um, yeah, it was more of I wanted to get into a situation where I can we can build something from the ground up. And I feel like Houston's sure. um, a perfect opportunity for that. You know, um, one of the, one of the players that you play with, a mm-hmm. former Buffalo Bill, Jerry Hughes, yeah. a, a popular player here and a good player for a yes. long time. Had yes. a good season for Houston Great, really last good year. Season, yeah. Um, talk about him a little bit. You know, playing yeah. with Jerry Hughes, maybe a couple of things that you know you, you may have learned from him, or just being around right. him. Right. Oh man, Jerry is a a one of a kind kind of player. Man, he's first off, I mean, as a man personally, um, guy is all about his family, his mm-hmm. wife and kids. Um, great guy to look up to, even off the field. Man, I can't say anything bad about Jerry Hughes. Um, you know, takes care of his body well. I think he was what year thirteen. He's in now. Yeah, so I'm like he might that, be going man. into year. I think he was year twelve. I think he's going into year thirteen. But like for him to be moving and bending like he does, like we call he him like Spider- eight and a half sacks or something yeah, like that. We he call only him, had we two call, and a half yeah. last year with Buffalo. Yeah, man. we call him Spider Man. Like the dude bends like <laughs> that old to be 33, 34 years old and be able to do what he does is just a testament to you know the work he work he puts in in his body and, and taking care of. But like things like I said, like even back to when I was at UB. I learned from a guy like learning from Khalil is like there's not much that needs to be said. You just you learn from people by just watching them and see sure. how they operate and see how they operate as professionals. And I feel like I'm still learning um, from Jerry and and, and um, fortunate to have that guy in my locker room to be able to learn from. When you look at the Houston Texans right now, mm-hmm. Stanley's wise been a rough couple of years, obviously. But right. I look at this team right now and I see a lot that there is to uh to be excited about. Yes. I know mean, you guys played a lot of competitive games last year. We yes. were talking about this right. you know, before we went on the year here. I mean, right. you guys were one or two plays away from being the Chiefs, from mm-hmm. being the Cowboys. Yeah, so the Chiefs you know, over time, yeah. Yeah, so there was some, you know, some a lot of competitive with this yeah. team. You got a new coach, the Marvel right. Lions. You yeah. got a, yep. you're in good cap shape. You guys mm-hmm. got 11 draft picks, including yep. two of the first 12, three yep. of the top 33. You're almost certain to get a new young quarterback, maybe yep. bring in a veteran as well. Yep. There's a, it feels like, if you're a Houston, Texas fan right, right now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not. I'm a Demo fan, yeah. but I'm I follow That's okay. I'm a, Houston, That's okay. <laughs> I'm a Houston fan as long as you're there. Right. But anyway, right, right, in all right, seriousness, right. yes, there there seems to be a lot to be excited about if you oh, are a Houston, sure. Texans fan. Yeah. Uh, going forward, um, I, I I think we do have a lot to be excited about. I mean, I think the defense, um, at times, especially the second half of the season, played played well. You know, we played exceptional. Um, not to say our offense, you know, didn't, but you know, there were some some things that just weren't clicking, maybe and. You know, that's all part of the growing process as you go through growing pains. But um, I think the attention is there. If, you, if you're if you around the building and around the guys in the building, you see that we all go in there. And we, we work as hard, if not harder, than anybody around the whole entire league. So um, we're gearing up to have a, a really good season this year. We're excited about having uh, Coach Ryans and, you know, the potential to have new teammates in the draft picks like we discussed. And, uh, you know, we might take a quarterback or whatever. Um, not, nothing against Davis and, you know, anything – He's got going on because no matter what, it's just, you know, next guy up and, and we all just are working towards a common goal and that's winning. You know? Yeah, for sure. Now you uh you've gone been playing for six years now, you right. know, you're going to six years. Mm-hmm. And as an undrafted free agent, right now your first priority is yourself right. and to make the team and, right, to, right, and right, to contribute right. and be the best player that you could be. Right. But do you kind of find yourself now where you're in a position where like you see a rookie undrafted free agent mm-hmm. coming in who might be wet behind the ears like you were right. a handful of years ago. Mm-hmm. Maybe give them a little bit of advice, a little oh, bit of guidance. Sure. Not necessarily even someone in your position. It could be a receiver, or running right. back, whoever. You know what I mean? You've been through it. You've seen it now right. with these guys. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not never willing to not help any guy, even sure. if it is at my position. You know, Absolutely. because at the end of the day, I'm confident in the work that I put in my own self and my ability, you know, to overcome whatever circumstances and put that's put in front of me. So. 
I'm willing to help any younger guy, not just at, you know, the defensive line position, but or receiver position, wherever, and just kind of just give them tips on what I've seen in the league so far and, you know, what I've seen, how certain situations play out, and just give them advice, all right, yo, like you may have all the talent in the world, but this is how you need to apply this to that, and this is don't do this or don't do that and do this, and, you know, spend your time, you know, maybe I did – or just even go over some of the mistakes I made early on in my career from right. every different perspective and just, you know, I want – I'm there to help. I want to be the – because I ultimately want to win. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so it's like you're only helping your teammates to work towards that goal. Um, we're winding down here at Imperial Pizza with Damone Harris from the Houston Texans. So you've been in the league for a while now, and I'm mm -hmm. sure you hope to be in the league for many years to come. Yes, sir. Have you mm -hmm. started to give some thought to what you're going to do post football when oh, it yeah. comes to an end at some point? Oh, Again, for sure. I mean, like, I, road, but... like I said at the beginning of this interview, man, my one coach told me the music is going to stop one day. Sure. The music is going to stop playing one day. The music ain't going to play forever. <laughs> I wish I could play football when I was 50. No, actually, I don't. That'd be a lot of pain. <laughs> but um, no, nah, man, the music is going to stop one day. And, um, you know, actually, my little brother just became a real estate agent. You know, so yeah. I've been kind of dabbling in that field a little bit and um, things of that nature. But, you know, yeah, I'm giving it some thought for sure. I mean, everyone has to think about it, you know, and, and it's just, you know, right now my focus is what my focus is and that's ball, you know, and it takes it takes all of you to focus on that. But, um, you know, one day will come where I have to, you know, hang the cleats up and, you know, move on in a sense, you know, and I just don't want to have any regrets as far as um, taking like thinking so much about what's next and not putting everything into the game that I can right now, you know. So let me – one more question for Damone here. Mm -hmm. I got an NFL player on here, so I feel like this is a good opportunity to ask this question. Mm -hmm. Maybe there might be somebody watching this right now who is a high school football player or mm -hmm. maybe it's somebody who's playing at a smaller school in college right. or more likely a parent who's watching or listening to this show right now right. and they have a kid who – Maybe right. it's football or maybe any sport. It don't even matter what sport it is for that right, matter. Right, right, right. Give some advice to both the kid, mm -hmm. you know, who might have aspirations and dreams of playing professionally and also, because right. I think this is important and I know you do too, give some advice to the parent out there who is, is raising their kid, you know, to raise them to be an athlete and do it the right way. Because there are wrong ways right. when it comes to uh, – how we as parents right. raise our kids when it comes to sports. Right. And I, you know, um, I'll give the advice first, I would say to the kid. So to the kid, I would say, um, for me, like, you got to think like I was so far behind the eight ball as far as like starting, for, like sure. playing organized sports period. So for me, it's like, first off, have fun. First off, have fun, handle your business. I mean, I think Stevie Johnson says it, have fun, handle your business. Yep which means prioritize what needs to be prioritized. Schooling, like you, you can't get anywhere without grades, you know? And, but as far as like your, your sport goes, you know, if you have a goal at the end of your mind, it's not even a goal because sometimes you set a goal and you meet that goal. It's like, oh, that's the end game. No, it's like you, you, you set something up in your mind and like just shoot for the stars, you know, and, and break it down into a process. Like my, me coming up in high school, I knew, always knew like I had the potential to play in the NFL but I had a long road in front of me to get yeah. there. So I broke it down into processes. All right, I need to get stronger. All right, well, what do I need to do to get stronger? All right, I need to get faster. What do I need to do to get faster? What do I need to do to, like, break it down into a process? Because if you look at the bigger picture and be like, I need to be in the NFL tomorrow, like, you're going to get so overwhelmed and and, and, and psych yourself out and, and the pressure eats you alive. So break my advice to the kid is just break everything down into a process. Mm -hmm. You know, things take time. It takes time to develop as a person, like as a human, like as, from even if it's a female or a male, like your body is going to take time for it to develop. Be patient with yourself, but also have your, but at the same time, you got to also have pedal to the metal at all times, if that makes sense. You yeah, know? it does. It's yeah. like, but at the same time, you can't burn yourself out. So br break it down into a process, but don't, you know, you know, burn yourself out if that makes sense you know it does so and then to the to the parent i would say you know you can push your kid but don't shove them yeah. you know i think we talked about this earlier you can push them but don't shove them because you don't want your kid their only drive to be that and reason that they're playing this sport is because of the parent or because of all right i feel like i don't want to let uncle john down or 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 my dad down or or cousin pat or someone i don't want to let them right. down so this is why i'm doing this like no, it has to be, you have to be intrinsically motivated, your own self, um, 
to be able to like the kid has to be intrinsically motivated themselves you know to get themselves to that level like there's not there's nothing a, a, a parent can do because sometimes you can push so hard or you can shove so hard that you push them out the ledge to be like and they fall out of love with the game and fall out of yeah having fun with the game and then by that time they fall out of love and having fun with the game then you're losing mm-hmm. you know what i mean so um and there's a fine line you know and i know it's tricky with parents and between like pushing your kid but you know you know just you know put a ball in front of them and see how they react right, whoa whoa look at little johnny's having fun kicking the soccer ball yeah. all right little johnny i'm gonna set up some drills for you little johnny mm-hmm. all right that's you pushing them <laughs> yeah all right little johnny let's see what oh you want to do this and then the, then you'll find your kid is coming to you with, all right well dad i want to sign up for this soccer camp and, and then they'll just you know and you're just there to guide them you yeah. know what i mean but if you shove i think that's where some parents lose their kids i agree 100 percent. that's yeah. really really good advice too yeah. all right that's going to do it for this show mm-hmm. he'll be you're, you're Houston Texans defensive man. You're mm-hmm. a Super Bowl champion, but mm-hmm. to me, you're always going to be Buffalo born and raised. Buffalo born and raised. Most baby. importantly for us here at Imperial Pizza in yes, South yes. Buffalo, Damone Harris. Thank you very much for doing the show, Damone. And yes. I'll tell you what, too. So we're going to be doing this every Thursday mm-hmm. next week. Um, Go Long founder, national sports writer Tyler Dunn will be with me. Take care, guys. Talk to you.